I feel like I yelled at you and then you slammed a door and then I left. And Is then... it weird that I think we have different biggest fights? I would say that's the biggest mostly because of how angry we were. We were like rage texting I don't know. each other. I feel like maybe. So you would say what the phone was the biggest fight? No, I would say July. July was pretty bad. I would say July was when things got rough. Yeah. That's when our relationship really, we took it. We took a moment we were like, if we want to continue do what we're doing what we're doing, and if we want to be as close as we've always been, yeah. things need to change. And it felt like, I feel like it was very obvious, or not obvious, I guess to me, because mm -hmm. I see our accounts all the time. Yeah. We had more like posts individually that, around that time frame. Yeah. And it got like a little, just less. Welcome back. It is episode 14 of Closet Talk, where on this podcast, we are now moving forward and talking about queer life experiences. Maybe not queer life experiences. Experiences through adulthood. Experiences through childhood. And today, we are experiencing Carter Kench. That was a good intro. Was it? Yeah, I Did thought I, I liked good? it. It was, a, it was like a run-on sentence, and then at the end, it was my name, so yeah. pretty cool. Did you like the ending of that? Yeah, it was juicy. Beautiful. It is going to be juicy today. I'm so excited for today's conversation. We're talking about soulmates. <gasps> but before that, we are... <laughs> <My> favorite topic. <laughs> we are talking about the queer moment in history, where every single week we talk about a pivotal moment in queer history that maybe changed us into who we are today. And it's, it's Carter's choice today. Oh, it's mine? Yeah. So essentially talk about whatever you want. No, I'm kidding. Ooh, okay. But I think we talked about it being a gay awakening moment where... You saw a juicy little man on TV and you went, I want either to look like that or to be with that. I have one. Go. I just, I don't know if it's too I niche. also, I think I overheard you say it earlier and I don't, I might not know who it is. Mm -mm. I changed my mind. You changed your mind? I switched up. Okay, way to lie to me. Um, okay, might be niche, but I'm just going to go with it. Sporticus from Lazy Town. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. the, 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 the blue guy. No. <laughs> The blue it's guy. It's the blue guy. He's the, the blue superhero. Guy with, the, with the skinny eyebrow mustache. But I mustache. think I wanted to be him. He was able to do three Arabians into a back bend, into a back tuck. Stuff like that's crazy. What's an Arabian? Uh, it's a type of It's a type of cheer move, or no? Is that I, the wrong word? No, it's not. Arabian. It's a dance move. It's well, a dance move? A gymnastics move. Did you do gymnastics? Mm -mm. But I used to watch them growing up because I thought they were super cool. Hence as to why he is someone I wanted to be. Okay. And who was the first person you saw on TV where you were like, I find this attractive? I find this attractive? Mm-hmm. Um, Sporticus. <laughs> Sporticus? Yeah. Part two. I think it was a mix of the both. I think we've talked about mine before, for sure, but mine was definitely Jade from Victorious. Jade? But we've talked about how that makes sense for me. Oh, I thought we talked about this and we got a different answer last time. What was it? It was the girl from Tinkerbell. <gasps> Silver Mist! Yeah. I loved Silver Mist. The one that like went down and like moved that water. When I was, she, when she moved that water she when I was 12, water. she moved me. Yeah, she was, she was everything and more. There were multiple aspects to that though. I was like, do I want to be Silver Mist? Would I be a water fairy? So yeah, my Sporticus was your Silver Mist? I would believe so. Yeah, if we're talking about that age. Yeah. And that. 100%. That right there. What, what's the name of this topic? Sorry. Oh, queer. the queer moment. And that was our queer moment in history for the both of us. Quite. And today. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous and excited. Actually, you can't say I'm that. Just excited. I'm just really excited. Why don't you say I'm nervously excited? I'm jitterously excited. Jitter. That sounded so close to something else. Today on Closet Talk with Maddie Westbrook and Carter Kench, we're talking about soulmates. Hey, Pookie. Hi. Hey. Okay. All right, Carter. I did lie straight to your face, and what? we are not starting out with the main chunky topic today of soulmates why because i took something from you what i took your heart and soul and i brought it on set today my heart and soul okay i just wanted to touch it i did i drove here so it wasn't i'm Jeep. i'm redoing my comfort pillow tonight <laughs> you took her off my shelf i did i jumped really high and stubbed my finger why into her? the shelf. why maleficent because she was on the edge and i didn't want you to notice that i took one i see so the only way you are going to get your child Maleficent back is if you accurately answer the next five questions. What? If not, she's gonna be held hostage in my closet. No, because what kind in of In this closet. This? In this I very up to talk to you. closet for approximately 14 days. <sighs> are you ready? 
Are the questions easy? I believe so. Okay. Like, I think you'd be excited to answer them. Okay, question one. If you had to make one of your gay friends straight forever, who would you pick? Scott. And why? I knew you were going to say Scott. I knew it. I feel like it makes the most sense mathematically. But you're just, like, dooming him into a life of eternal turmoil. I'm keeping him from, like... Danger? Yeah. He's (laughs) a late bloomer. I feel like... He was like the he'd be the safe, the the safe bet. Yeah. If you picked me, I would never forgive you. So, Scott, sorry. You no, like you make women. sense. You're like a local lesbian. Thanks. Okay. Question number two. <laughs> Mary kill. Hercules, Tarzan, and Aladdin. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I know. I know, too. Like, I definitely. You're making this real difficult for me. Um, okay. Hercules. I feel like he would make my life easier, so I'd want to marry him. For sure. But Aladdin would be able to fly me wherever I wanted. Oh my, I forgot about the carpet. We could go the to The carpet Fiji is such an free. important element. You have to think about the resources here. Right? Um, okay. Who was the other one? Tarzan. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tarzan could get freaky. Right. I think I'm a pass. Oh, okay. Maybe a little too. I feel Tarzan would be my key. I don't want to, I feel bad, like, t- you know, I'm a Disney boy. I don't, I don't want to. K-I-L-L, anyone. That was so, like, soft of you. You <laughs> couldn't even say it. I don't want to hurt anyone, I'm guys. Just gonna, I'll just stop it short. Because there was actually a video where, like, someone said, I want to keep my mom. So what are your answers? <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer the question. Thank you for keeping me yeah. on task. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm stalling. I think that's what I'm doing. I will K-I-L-L Tarzan. <gasps> I will M-A-R-R-Y Hercules and... I'll kiss. I'll kiss that boy Aladdin. On the lips. And his magic carpet. Okay. Wait. <laughs> on the magic no, carpet. No, sorry. Over misspoke. Yeah. On the magic carpet. <laughs> For real. Okay. I love that. And then question number three. If you had to take away any one of your friend's social media following, thereby making them start from fresh, who would you choose? What kind of That question? was a dirty question. Who came up with that? No, yeah. It was definitely you. Look at him Which one of y'all down. woke up and chose violence? <laughs> Asking per- for personal reasons. And I can't say myself. Aww. I mean, why would I want to wish that on anybody? That's really rude. Right. You work hard for what you obtain. Right? Everybody I know has done something to sacrifice something. To get to where we are? Yeah. Sorry, that was so vague for no reason. No, I get it. Because I feel the same way. Like, I don't think I'd want to take away anyone's. Yeah. Okay, then, like, we'll restructure. Who do you think could build the most followers the quickest? The quickest? I would say you. Well, thanks. Really? You just got that personality, baby girl. I would say you. Okay. I feel like if you could, maybe you could rebrand and you could come back maybe with like a different colored hair or something. The split dye. And you could the go return by like, of the split dye. And you could go by like Matimus. Matimus. Oh my gosh. My trainer, call- John calls me that. Really? He calls me Matimus. Oh, I didn't know he did that. Plot twist. Okay. Question from me. If there was anyone in your life who doesn't do social media, who would you want it to be like start? Who do you think would have a really good influence on people? Sorry, this one's stumping me. I So someone who... Who doesn't do social media in your life, who's like... like oh, it could it's even, either got to be my sister... I knew you are going to say Or that. it's got to be my hometown friend, Kate. Hometown friend, Kate, is so good. Hometown friend, videos. Kate, is in fact her nickname. I call her that just yeah. easy to remember. But yeah. hometown Kate, she's got the goods. She does. She she's, just needs she, to find out how to export those. <laughs> and then into it's the world. smooth sailing. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. That was sweet. I knew it would either be your sister because she was. She I was, was just good. I don't she's know. She's good. She's super, super creatively intelligent. Wow. That's an intelligent way to say it. Thanks. Super. And then Kate is really funny in all of your videos. Mm-hmm. And then if you could go back in time and look at your most popular videos, which one would you do differently? Differently. Differently. Where you were like, oh, this did so well, but I could have done a different approach. My first thought was the the VidCon Squishmallow Pit. Mm-hmm. I did a video where I like jumped in it. Mm-hmm. No, sorry, scratch that. Better idea. Scratch when I that. Met... Reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Too soon. Um, <laughs> when I went to meet the Grinch for the first time, or no, sorry, for the second time. Yeah, yeah. I did the same style and layout as like a short form video, I Mm -hmm. really wanted to make it a long form video Mm -hmm. and have it be a really fun experience where I documented the whole thing. And then I procrastinated it Mm -hmm. until I got there and realized, oh, (laughs) I haven't recorded anything. 
So that's it? I think. <laughs> I no, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Sometimes, I don't find myself dwelling on this that often. Sometimes when I make a video and then I'm just like, I post it. I just realized like when I start the video, like, oh, you should have started this yesterday. Yeah. So I get, I get the procrastination. Here's I think Maleficent. Was that. Here's oh. your baby. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> that was so violent. It's okay. Okay. Now we both have a comfort pillow while we sit here in comfort. Oh, this was, about... you thought this through. You said he, he's probably going to want one. Yeah. Are you, you, it's like nice to have something to like hold and like fidget with. I feel like that's oh, nice. Yeah. And she has like so many different elements. You can just kind of like. People with ADHD <laughs> have superpowers. Yeah. Moving forward, soulmates. Gotta love them. Gotta love them. Or hate them. Or despise them. It could be a love-hate relationship. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes it is the best of both worlds. Yeah. We got the best of both worlds. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was going to add lip you. Thanks. I just couldn't keep singing because that was embarrassing. Don't mention it, soulmate. But Yeah, soulmate. Moving forward. Do you believe in multiple versions of soulmates? Yeah. I think the definition of soulmate is it varies, mm -hmm. but soulmates can take the form of different people. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I think it's also like the difference between platonic and romantic soulmates. Yeah. Everyone calls us platonic soulmates, and I agree. I think um, we have a very special dynamic. Special. We're very special. Where we, um, like some sometimes one of us will do the cooking, and one of us will do the cleaning. And one of us will do the scooping of the cat litter. And then one of us will do the scooping of the cat litter on the second floor. And then one of us will do the cleaning of the balcony. Oh, oh my gosh, I did buy that orange brush. To clean the sp spider webs? To clean up the spider webs. Clutch. When did you realize, like, when we were friends? I actually don't think I have a defining moment for this. But when were you like, oh, this friendship is different. Like, mm -hmm. this one means, like, more. Honestly, I think when I realized that we hung out on our balcony in the old apartment for like four and a half hours mm -hmm. without meaning to. Yeah. And then we came back in and just felt good. Yeah. And that was like really interesting. It's rare to feel that with someone. And then when you do, it's a really cool thing that you don't want to lose, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want more of it. Yeah. Um, but even when we went on adventures, when we went to Target, mm -hmm. it never felt like we separated from our like sharing the same interests, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like we always wanted to do the same things. We always wanted to go to the same places mm -hmm. and when we didn't we got sad yeah and we started going to the gym together and we started like kind of syncing up in ways that seemed to be even our periods are aligned i can't speak on that one <laughs> but it got to the point where we were able to coexist mm -hmm. and never feel like we were combating yeah each other's needs or like yeah who they are they're sparkle who we be yeah i agree um, i think that was it for me too i think it was when i like you were like the person I was like, oh, I want to like, he's the first person I want to tell things to. Really? Like when something good happens in my life. Yeah. Especially because of what we do. Generally, all of the good news in my life has to do with like, oh, uh, this brand that I've really wanted to work with for so long. Or, you know, like I got this really cool, cool opportunity. Oh, I'm starting this podcast. Like you're the person. It's a lot I'm, easier to share it. Because you'll get it. Yeah. You'll understand. No, I remember when you first told me about this and I think we eked. Yeah. It's also like, like I screen. think with our job. It's very easy to compare yourself to others. And I don't think I've ever once compared myself to you. Mm -mm. I've only ever been like proud of you or like Thank really you. excited for you. I can say the same thing for you. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, boo. We got that electric touch. For real. The sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about this with the guest that was here before you. Um, Honored. How like we've talked about like in life, like we were kind of talking about the different forms of like relationships, especially like within queer people, for how sure. it's like. You can develop these extremely close bonds because you really understand what the other person is going through. Right. And I think it's cool because we've talked about like living together. We've talked about being around each other and we've talked about like, I don't know, like we'd be, we'd raise a cool kid. Mm -hmm. Like we'd be really good at that. We also came up with names for the kid. Yeah. I think we ended, we had like Timothy. Timothy is ridiculous. We're it's not, not that. We're not naming it's it It's not Timothy. that out of pocket if you think about it. Yeah. Because you got to always think about the names and then the nicknames that come with it. When you think of Timothy, mm -hmm. you got TT, Timbo. You have o -tree. Timbo and the Limbo. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I but guess my brain. In terms of like our relationship, what do you think the biggest thing is that we like learned from? Um, For you, I think it was definitely what it's... <laughs> no you can say it okay um 
I think I've learned the most about what it means to have an intimate relationship with somebody through Mm -hmm. kind of experiencing your life Mm -hmm. up close and personal. Hey. You know, I get to see that fourth wall and live in it and Mm -hmm. wake up with it directly below me. Hey. via, Via hallways and staircase. But that was a really cool thing to learn. Growing up, I didn't, my family was, I don't know how to explain. I don't know. I'm trying to put it into perspective. Yeah, but it's like difficult just because um, I guess I always was never like directly associated with Mm -hmm. any relationship. But that makes no sense because I lived with a family of four. I know. But like I kind of see what you mean. Like with your family when you were a kid, you would have to wake up with them every day and go wherever they went because that's just like what you do. Yeah, We chose this life. We found each other Mm -hmm. on the streets. I found you online, actually, well, on the internet. Yeah, but then we met outside of our old apartment complex on the street. We did meet on the street. And then I was like, come in. And then you came in, and then I don't even know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. We spooned the first night that we met. Fun fact. We also shared a dum-dum. We did. That was gross. Very. And it very was, uh, in high gen- I think dis- that, that time like, period as a whole, it wasn't even us. It was, I think, just no. the generation. Yeah. We are. <laughs> as a whole was, in- was just weird. We, we met. We met. <sighs> Oh, I know how we met. I know how we met. I, saw, I almost got him scammed. <laughs> well, that you're jumping to conclusion. Sorry. Um, first time meeting, follow back and saying hey. Second yeah. time meeting was this opportunity to live in a content house. Mm-hmm. Before I had any interest, or before my parents and I had a conversation about me not going to college and moving out here, mm-hmm. this was back like when I haven't even visited yeah. LA um, super early on. I was doing a lot of outreach for the company who wanted to start the house themselves. And I was like, oh my gosh, he'd be perfect. They had you working. They had me working and they weren't paying me anything. That was the weird part is it wasn't from a company. It was from a a mutual. Yeah. So I started FaceTiming and kind of chit-chatting. And it was you and a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. And I I showed a real interest because I was 17. And the idea of coming and living in a content house was like every 17-year-old's hope and dream. Yeah. And not every, but... I found out that like the company who was starting it wasn't even the company who was starting it. Right. Who was hired by a different company. And well, it was all really confusing. And I called him and while like I realized we were being scammed while I was trying to explain to Carter what was going on. I wasn't I wasn't included in the scam. No. Because my parents told me no. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank goodness. And I pulled out before this all yeah. happened. But we weren't close at this time. I was mostly in work mode. Like I, I was obviously looking to make friends. But that's how we met. And then yeah. all of a sudden We were in like we were in our wanting to move out to LA era. Yeah, we were. Where we were still living at home. Yeah. But we didn't want to anymore. And then I moved out here and then you visited. You just Yeah, were I like, visited well, your closet, funny enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well you visited with like you were staying with two mutual friends of ours at the time and then stuff just fell through. And he ended up calling me one day, like while this was after we had already like hung out for the first time. Like he came over and a bunch of friends were already over and we just hung out and it went really great. And then I was like, man, I really like this kid, like, a lot. And I already knew you'd be funny, but, like, the personality that Carter has, like, on and offline are the same thing. Oh, stop it. They're the same thing. Like, living with him and watching his videos are the same thing. And so, let me just hold this, I guess. I smacked it. (laughs) Um, And so I was like, I was like, I I really like this kid. I want to be his friend. And then stuff fell through with the people that you were staying with. And he called me. He was like, Maddie, I literally have nowhere to go. And I was like, come here. Days were rough. Yeah. And so he nights were dark. <laughs> yeah, and so he came over and stayed in my closet for like how long? Two days. Yeah, and then a good not extended stay. And then a room opened up. Yes, one of the roommates you lived with wanted to live alone because you were in your party era. And I wasn't in my party. That was like a non-consensual party era. You, yeah, days were one dark. One of our roommates <laughs> continuously threw parties and continuously had people over and it was just not my vibe. And it was just like, I w- walked in once and there was somebody like sleeping in his old bathroom and I was like, what is going on? And so it was really bad. Yeah, I wasn't here for this. No, he wasn't. The second I moved in, it became a homie home. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like the homie home has not only grown, but just like continued to live in. Yeah. And we talked about being like, Going through so many eras together, I think the thing that has brought us so close is that we're the two friends that survive out of the friend group. We are. Like, we're we're the, we're the homies that are still homies. Like, we had this, like, big friend group, and then everything, like, I yeah. feel like just fell apart and naturally. Also, like, and also, like, I think our lack of 
living alone mm-hmm. is the is the, like the sole reason. Like we kind of are tethered. Like he was talking about, like I'm the anxious one. He calms me down. He's the like got all this energy. I kind of need to rein it in. Not all the time. No, but we, a good mix. We match each other's energy mo- most of the time. I will say I will sometimes say I know you're downstairs, and so just to already break that silence and kind of come in with a purpose. Yeah. I'll just sing my way down the stairs. And then I know he's coming because he's singing. Yeah. But yeah, I think it was also like he does like I do the cooking and he does like the cleaning, and it's just like an easy environment to be. Yeah. In. We coexist, except oh, for yeah. a couple things like the dishes and we thought about that this the morning. basic necessities that we lack. <laughs> no, we don't. We have everything we need, though. And I think that's the thing. Like we were talking about earlier, like building like families. Like I was telling you, like you were my fa- you're my family out here. Like you're my f- like a part of it now. Like my mom even calls him her second son. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I just call Carter? her mama. Yeah. He texts her. He's like, happy birthday, mama. Yeah. It's really sweet. Why do we have this bond? Like, what do you think it is? Loneliness. <laughs> We're not that lonely. Well, no, but I think when we moved out here, we had nobody. Yeah. There was not any familiar faces. Mm-hmm. And we, our magnets were meant for each other. Yeah. And so we attracted. It's also like, the I was kind of wary about him for a while. Like, because my old roommate was putting these things in my head, like, oh, Carter's this, Carter said huh. this, Carter said that. Oh, was he? You know, I told you about this. Why don't you elaborate? Because I don't think I remember. remember. Remember when you made that joke? No. Yes, you do. And then he didn't talk to you until he moved out? Yeah. I remember the joke. Okay, to, my, to be fair, it was funny. It was funny. But that's the thing. When he made that joke and then I saw my roommate's reaction, who's my former yeah. best friend, it was like we realized we agreed on everything. In every social environment that we're in. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was feeding you things. Mm-hmm. I started to realize, like, Carter's right. Like, and then we'd get into social situations, and he'd be my comfort person. And then we'd go home, and then we'd, like, debrief the social situation. Right. And then we'd agree. Best we'd, time. Yeah. That's, like, my favorite time ever. <laughs> this is weird having a structured conversation. <laughs> like, we usually just say whatever we want whenever we want to each other. Yeah. What's the biggest fight you've ever gotten into? The biggest fight we've gotten into. Um, there was this one time when I noticed an increase in phone usage by my roommate to the point where I felt a little unvalued. Right. I felt like a penny when once upon a time I was in fact that quarter. <laughs> Carter. I'm just I'ma say it. I'ma speak the truth. The heart wants what it wants. But that wasn't our biggest fight, I would say. There's my a- phone usage was not our biggest fight. It was it was a factor of <laughs> No, it wasn't. To each their own. I wouldn't say that it was. Well, yeah. It was definitely like a point where you had to sit me down and be like, when we're together, I don't want you on your phone because I don't feel valued. Yeah. Sorry, this wasn't supposed to be attacking. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I just don't think that was the biggest. I think it was a problem. Yeah. But you're not like a a bad nut. I don't think you're a bad nut. Thank you. I think that's why we get along. But our biggest fight was probably... Just say it. Like... Okay, but what? I don't want this to sound negative. Oh. Remember that? Uh, can you give me time frame? When I had to, when I, remember when I left the house? <laughs> <laughs> remember when I ran away? Sorry, the way you worded that was No, funny. it was, it when was. When you. Oh, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know our biggest fight. It was when, and we can, we've agreed on this at this point. So okay. it's okay to talk about. Is it a mix? When we were moving. Yeah. And you were really stressed about work. Oh. And he had a lot going on in his life. Keeping a weekly YouTube upload schedule. It was difficult. And I don't even do it. That's why I'm here doing this. It's hard for me like to do my own things. And and don't don't undersell yourself. No, the admiration that I have for you. You have a podcast. And I do have a podcast. You have a podcast. I have a podcast. A successful podcast. We in it. I I admire the way that you really work. Thank you. You do your you film, you edit, you're a hard worker. And around the time that we were moving, he had a big YouTube video on his plate. And I think you were very stressed about that. I don't remember the video. Squishmallow hunting. Squishmallow hunting. It It went up in April. It was a big, it was a very big squishmallow hunting video. And in turn, that led me to do a lot of the work for the apartment in terms of moving. Yeah. This also, there was was a lot of misunderstandings throughout this Mm -hmm. arrangement where the movers, we didn't realize, would actually pack up our boxes. So we sat there. You sat there. Yeah. Mostly 
Excuse me. I burped. No, that's You all right. sat there. Excuse you. You packed a lot of boxes not knowing the movers would do it for us. Yeah, I had no idea. And the move was just difficult. Yeah. I was like, I was going through a really difficult time emotionally. It was like post breakup. And I was just going through like so much. And so until like three in the morning every day for like two weeks, I was in the kitchen like crying, packing our stuff up into boxes. And he was sleeping or editing and i did the majority of the move because i didn't really understand moving and yeah. that took like a really big emotional toll on me and i would say our biggest fight is when you told me that you did just as much in the move <laughs> and then i was like you're joking like there's no way okay would you say i think that's our biggest fight i for sure didn't value i didn't understand the amount yeah. of workload you were doing yeah you didn't necessarily show me in real time i guess yeah i just yeah yeah. And so the, I would say that was our biggest fight. And then we've taken a lot of walks and discussed this and I yeah, apologize. Yeah. No. And we're totally past it. But that was the biggest one. And then I was like, I don't know. I feel like I yelled at you and then you slammed a door and then I left. And Is then... it weird that I think we have different biggest fights? I would say that's the biggest mostly because of how angry we were. We were like rage texting I don't know. each other. I feel like maybe. So you would say that the phone was the biggest fight? No, I would say July. July was pretty bad. I would say July was when things got rough. Yeah. That's when our relationship really, we took it. We took a moment. We were like, if we want to continue do what we're doing what we're doing, and if we want to be as close as we've always been, yeah. things need to change. And it felt like, I feel like it was very obvious, or not obvious, I guess to me, because mm -hmm. I see our accounts all the time. Yeah. We had more like posts individually that around that time frame. Yeah. And it got like a little, just less. Yeah. But it wasn't anything we couldn't handle no and that's why i believe that we might be platonic soulmates no that's we, why we are is we because come back. we come back every we rise time. above every time but like i think that's like the importance of it too it's like you know it's watching that decrease in posting together happen yeah it's because we decided to start valuing our individual relationship rather than our online relationship yeah for sure where I, we realized there were things we needed to work on that if we didn't work on things weren't going to be okay yeah almost touching back to what we talked about earlier when you get to a point with someone where you do coexist, you know, things change. Mm -hmm. People, again, want to... We can talk about it. It's okay. People want to lean towards... I don't... It's always been hard for me to, like, find the right words when I talk about this. Um, like, people want different things in life, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And I think that obviously has this dynamic where life is never just a straight line and things mm -hmm. are always constantly changing. And sometimes when things change, you gotta adapt, you gotta develop. Right. And so when we went, when we went from a time where we, go, we went to the gym together, we went- Everywhere together. Everywhere together. Because you know, it was fun and it worked and we made videos off it and mm -hmm. it was productive and it felt like we were never like slacking. Yeah. I don't know, it felt like good. Yeah. Um, to then, you know, knowing, like making new friends and finding other people well, I got well, a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what happened. Yeah, but it's not even like I'm upset about it. I, no, I, I understand. Completely. I know you want me to be happy. Like but you get that girl. I do. I love her. We were like cl so close. Yeah. Like so close. And then me kind of finding somebody romantic that no offense, you don't fulfill me in those ways. I try. No. When it comes to hugging. <laughs> no. I'd, but yeah, that's a thing too. I don't really Correction, enjoy sorry. platonic physical contact that we've talked about closer. I don't think it brought us closer. No. Yet. I think we're still in the phase. I, it's an ongoing. It's a, it's a <laughs> constant, like we are constantly. We're still navigating this new situation. Situation is crazy. I don't want to call it that, no. <laughs> the situation is wild. No, no, I don't think it's brought us, I think it's upgraded our communication skills. It, it yeah. has taught growth. Yeah. It has taught how to communicate. It has taught us mm -hmm. how to be better at understanding each other's needs when we're understanding together. each other's roles. Yeah. In each other's lives. Yeah. And yeah, it reminded me that, you know, it's okay to go outside when yeah. my roommate is occupied and touch grass and maybe go play pickleball or run. Depends on what you're interested in. <laughs> yeah. But it changes day on a daily basis. Yeah. But like it, it's still fun. And I we think, have our moments together. Yeah. I think it's just communication is what we've learned. Because we never really had to. We were always on the same page about everything for like s years. Like so long. It was just same wavelength. Yeah. And then as I kind of started to like fall in love, you know, that takes, 
it takes effort in a weird way. It takes time. Do you think a factor of why this time was like rougher was because, never mind. No, don't do that. You know I hate when you do I'm that. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know how to word it. And then I was thinking of how I would word it. And then I like, it would come across weird. You can say, ask and then I can tell you if it's weird. Um, okay. Here I go. <laughs> it's like jumping off the deep end. Um, do you think it's weird? Or do you think it, not weird. Weird is the wrong word. Okay. Take your time, boo. It's always, I'm finding the right word. I like go through a game of categories. You can head. just say weird and I won't interpret it as a negatively connotated word. I don't want you to. I'm not going to. So just ask the question oh, with the word weird and then I'll be like, okay. okay. I won't take it negatively. Um, a factor. Okay. Of why this was something that was difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. was maybe because I already knew her. Yes. I think, that I think that was the biggest problem. Added to this change in navigating. I also, <laughs> I will admit throughout this, I'm an individually social person. So I'm super attached to him for obvious reasons. Like he's like literally my like everything. Like I'm your rock. I'm, I'm your gonna, custom mantle. No, like, I can't live this life without you. I don't ever want to. And I think, like, that's what makes us soulmates is we've sat down and had those conversations about, like, no matter what. Yeah. And it's also why I didn't run away. Right. It's, it's why I fought. Yeah. I that's why we're still fighting. It's like, I'm going to get all sad. Like, I or emotional, not sad. It's just like, I can't, like, I don't ever, like, you're my person. It's worth it. It's 100% worth it. It's worth understanding each other and taking that emotional capacity. Yeah. And I'm constantly like, we're, I'm learning from you and you're learning from me. And All the it's, time. It's like just You're like so a never worthy. ending encyclopedia. Yeah. And I feel like we help each other out in so many different ways. But I think I will admit I'm an, like I said, an individually social person. Are you going to the, yes. is that where you're going this with this? This is where I'm going with okay. this. Yeah. So when I meet people, I meet them individually. Yeah. I'm, I'm very like, I want to get to know you one on one. And so- I. In the past, we've had issues with him introducing me to somebody, like um, ski tr ski trip Friends. girl, ski trip. Yeah, can people... we name drop? Because she's such a Hometown. homie. Yeah. Okay. I have a friend named Hometown Homie. The Hometown Homie. Home. Okay, and then Hometown Friend Just Kate. Just my Hometown Homie. Yeah, love her. But regardless, I kind of like developed an individual relationship with her, and he was like, "Oh, I feel like you're stealing a friend." Yeah. And so, so I feel like that's also what happened except I didn't just steal a friend, I fell in love with her. And like, I think and, yeah. that was an entirely- And I, I won't even lie, like I, I feel awkward and like there's a new level mm -hmm. to that relationship. So it's just like, I don't know. It definitely played a role when you guys were first developing. Yeah. And I was- Could you see it? Yes, For we talk, we live together. I, I see no, it. No, I mean like, and I there was a it. while where I was like, nah. But I still knew because you got so distant. When you don't open up to me like fully, I know it's because there's something going on. Uh, the, you yeah. are you are like the opposite of a blank canvas. Like there's something <laughs> in there painting 24-7. Yeah. So I know something's going on. Yeah. And it was hard for a while because I knew that there was that disconnect. And then we hung out and we talked and I was like, oh, okay, I see. It's because I was scared to and I'm never, introduce somebody else into like kind of our life. I already knew her. It's that the thing though, because I knew that you knew her and I knew you knew our situation. It was really, it was really awkward for me for a while. I think yeah. that's what it was at the end of the day, because it was oh okay, I thought she was straight, <laughs> and then she wasn't, and I was like oh okay, and difficult new. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as anything happens over time, you know, you get used to things, you get comfortable. Yeah. So it's not really a biggie for me. Yeah. And it, I think died down, but it was hard. I, I feel like I needed to communicate that with you and not was a really hard conversation to have. Yeah. And it's really hard to sit down with, you know, someone who you care so much about and value so much and try and like open up and express those emotions that are tough. Cause I get that. Cause then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, am I the bad guy for having these feelings? And then, or like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or am I one of the three G's? Yeah. What are the three G's? Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's so smart. I've never heard that. You didn't know that it was the three G's? No. Oh. Yeah, but there's yeah. also a band called the Three Gs, right? Is there? That's the Bee Gees. Oh, I knew I was onto something. <laughs> yeah, but that's they do yeah. Staying alive, right? Yeah. Huh? 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 Throughout this experience, 
and throughout me finding love and us learning how to communicate like this has definitely been like a test to like the way that we engage in each other's lives four score and we've learned so much <laughs> what i was thinking four score and seven years ago and then i accidentally said that instead of for sure right sorry for sure four score <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've learned how to communicate throughout this process. And I think that's the thing. Like people see us and they're like, oh, you're perfect. Everything about you guys is perfect. And I think the most perfect part about us is that we're not. Yeah. And like we are constantly learning from each other and yeah. constantly learning more about each other. The truth do be that. And like we'll have moments too where I'm like, oh, why is he like this way? And then he, I'm sure you have moments where like, and I have moments where you? I'm like, why is she this way? Yeah. We have those moments with each other where we're like, but then like I find out something new about him or I spend time with his family or we have those moments. It's our time when we go out on the balcony and we sit there and we talk for hours. And I'm like, oh, he makes so much more sense after this. Same vice versa. And it's hard when we spend X amount of time away from each other and then we come back and so much has happened. And when you're not with somebody, you're not constantly sharing your life. Yeah. And so you got to come back and you got to like, catch back up and so it's so fun and it gives us like a reason to kind of get back together yeah. it's one of my favorite things when we've been well i hate being apart that's not one of my favorite things but when we've been apart for a right. few days or like a week and then we come back together and we sit down and we're like oh my gosh this is what happened yeah. and then i get the tea on your life and you get the tea on my life and it's like see this is why we are the way that we are it's like coming back stronger like a boomerang it's coming back to family oh i was that's really cute yeah. Mine was a lot less nice than that. No, <laughs> that's okay. So what would you say after that therapy session is your favorite memory with me? Probably when we binged every Tinkerbell animated movie back to back that was for five days straight. Sitting on the floor, like our hard floor because we didn't have a couch yet. Going to Target and playing that one song on loop the entire way there and back. Oh my gosh. Um, I didn't I, know I, 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 I lost you till I, I found, found you. you. And I never know how much you mean to me. Yeah. It's by the China McLean sisters. Yeah. Anyway. It was really good. It's yeah. called like, what is it called? The, bro- the Road the Not Taken? Divide. The Great Divide. The Great Divide. Yeah. We loved that song. I have such bad memory. We played it for like so long. Yeah. Just on loop. Um, but it I, made us feel like we were back to our elementary school sleepover days. And yeah. It was really fun. That's the thing too. Oh my gosh. I, I know like a lot of people say don't live with your best friend. And I think the one of the most special aspects of our relationship is that we weren't best friends when he moved in. We were close, but he was not what we are now. And I think, you know, moving in together, like we learned so much about each other so quickly. We developed. Living with your best friend is like having like the best slumber party of your life every night. Yeah. Like we watch Survivor and like if we, we know that if we have like this time together, we have like our allotted nightly activity. Yeah. And that's cooking dinner together is so fun. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm thinking like, and it's it's interesting, like, because with all of the things that have gone on, that still that's still stays true. Like, yeah. we still stay true to those nights. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. schedule them out. We say this fun time. No, and it's, it's something I look forward to as well. Because mm-hmm. if I've like you know been away for like a certain amount of time, it's something that I really look forward to. Yeah, yeah. But I I, I would say my favorite memory with you is bringing you to my hometown for the first time. Oh, I'll never forget it. I know, it and was- I. I drove him around and I showed him like my childhood home, like uh, which is what I'm still my parents still live in. And then I showed him like my elementary school, my high school, my middle school, all uh, on one street. I showed him like literally exactly where I grew up, and he yeah. he loves like locations. And I envy and it. My parents moved so fast when I graduated. So if I ever brought you back to my hometown, you'd be like, "Where's the house?" Yeah, it's gone. Right. Well, it's right there, but it's there. It. Just. Yeah being occupied by some new peeps. Honestly, my favorite was the matching PJs and that video on the 3rd of December when you gave me your sweater and I didn't realize it. Yeah, he didn't know that We were wearing a complete matching set from Hollister. And I was like, oh, this is what we're making the video about. So I like him showing off mine and I take her sweater and like put it on my He like threw it on the ground. It was like, and then she got really mad and told me. The 3rd of December, you gave me your sweater. I don't know how to sing, Conan Gray, yeah. Anyways, it was just a really clums moment. Clumsy. Clumsy moment. Yeah, but it was super cute. And then, oh yeah, I was going to say, he snuck out, last thing before we get into the best friend game. Where are you going with this? He snuck out of my house in the middle of the night to walk into a hurricane. <laughs> and I didn't know until the next day when I it saw It was actually video. just a tropical system in development. Storm. A tropical, tropical system, because it, it came from the Atlantic, or the Pacific. Sorry, I, I love weather. I could go on and on yeah, about it I was going to say, he loves weather. Um, but it's interesting. It had 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts, and you lived on the top of a hill, I, I, I would be crazy to not go out there and just feel the brunt force. Mm-hmm. 
It was yeah. so fun. He hopped my fence like a rickety fence. Yeah, I was the reason. We went back like a month ago and it was a new fence and we were so surprised. But also I, I knew the real reason why they got a new one. Yeah. Um, I got – I just – it was whatever. But um, yeah, that was so awesome. If you know Jim Cantor, he's a weather hunter. And he like he stands in all of those hurricanes. I'm jealous. I envy his career. Yeah, that is definitely he's he or has the, so many special interests. Or the vine with the girl, and <laughs> it's the stop sign that comes from nowhere and just like whacks her out of existence. That hits home. Welcome back to a very new segment. And the only time we've ever done this because you're my only best friend. Really? It is called the best friend test. Is it really? Yes, it is. Mm. Why would I lie about that girl? Mm. Okay, so we are answering these questions as fast as humanly possible. Do Should you I, really know me? I feel like I know you pretty well. No, all pretty these well. questions. I know you better than your own down. mother. Probably. Okay. When's my birthday? Uh, September 2nd of 2000. Mm. November 9th of 2002. That's right. Like, why are you looking I at just, me like I that? I wanted to see if you would hesitate. <laughs> no. You were right. Okay. What's my middle name? Middle name is Anne. It's, my middle name is my mother's name. Is it really Adriana? Oh, she just, it is Adriana. She just calls me Maddie Ann. Like, that's what she calls me. The hometown nickname is Maddie Ann. So the I always thought it was Anne, but it's Adriana, which is, I still get my cousin. What's mine? Philip. Like the prince. Yes. Both my parents' first names. Uh, Baron and Adriana. Shelly and Bob. No, that's my dad's. I, I know. I always call your dad Bob. Why did you do that? You know my dad's name. Say it with confidence. I don't know your dad's name. No, I know your dad's name. I know your dad's name. You don't know his full name? No. William! And what's his nickname? Dad? Dollar. Bill! That's it. Bill and Bob. Are you kidding? They're so similar. Yeah, my dad has an identical twin, Bill, Bob, yeah. I always call his dad Bob, like in my head. Which I, you've never even met Bob. <gasps> what's my go-to comfort movie or show? Go-to comfort movie or show, anything that involves a cooking utensil yeah. and product yeah i don't know why i said it like that but baking yes i swear you always you're always like carter i binge this entire show in two days you gotta <laughs> you gotta watch it and it's like bread documentaries what's mine um the weather no roller coasters no yeah updates on theme park development you gotta be niche the theme park development of the new universal lands no thank you epic universe universal opening in 2025 i'm updated on every single video that is made by this YouTuber called Theme Park Stop. I won't get it too niche, but yeah. I'll stop there. And I'm also updated on it because he watches it in the kitchen. On volume eight. Oh, what fictional character did I or do I have a crush on? Um, I didn't know that about you, but we answered this earlier. Yeah, this is actually... Or, well, no, well, we you knew just, Silver Mist? We're even closer now. Silver Mist for you. Spartanicus for you. Spartacus. Spartacus for you. Got you got an extra hand. I didn't know the name. Okay. What song do I love singing in the car the most? Oh, yeah. I met this girl. I think she yeah! likes me. Lucas Graham. That's a niche. You love it. Yeah, I love it. I learned the entire song just through singing that with you. Yeah. But if it was an artist, it would be Noah Kahn, hands down. No questions asked. You are always like quiet. He knows but you every quiet. song ever. You quiet sing. I do quiet sing. You quiet sing to it. What are you saying? I know songs. Yeah, you like all the songs. I do, but I have a couple that I would like immediately pinpoint in the back of my brain. I started playing Day and Night, and within the first half second, he was like, oh, uh -huh. Day and Night. Yeah, I toss and turn, no stressing in my mind. Yeah, mind. Day and Night. Such a such a bop. What's Honestly. my Starbucks order? <sighs> pink drink. Yeah. It's and a pink drink unless you're feeling a little frisky. You want to challenge that IBS? And then what is it? Uh, <laughs> latte. No, it's a brown sugar oak and shaken. Brown sugar shaken oat milk espresso with with regular milk because yeah. you don't like it. With, with oat milk with regular milk, it's oat milk. It's like a brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. Say that again. A brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. Oat milk. Oh, it is a brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. I just find it funny because some people will say milk and some people will say milk. He made fun of the way that I said milk. I didn't the make other fun day. of it. I just said it a little bit louder after you said it. Right. Is that making fun? Moving forward. His Starbucks order is a venti caramel macchiato with oat milk made upside down. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you got you got the nook and crannies of it. And then, oh, <laughs> what's something you do that drives me crazy? What is something I do that drives you crazy, Maddie Ann? <laughs> I'd love to know. He'll do this thing. I'll be like, I'll know something. I'll know something that's a fact. I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is that. Like, this happens when, like, earlier we were, he, he looked at me and he goes, 
are you starting testosterone? And I was like, Carter, no, like I, that's not something I think I'm interested in. He goes, why? And I was like, I just don't want a hairy butt. Like there are certain factors of testosterone that I don't think I would want. And then I told him a separate thing that happens to your body when you start testosterone that I just don't think I would ever be comfortable with physically. And he goes, that doesn't happen. And I'm like, what do you even mean? Like, I know it's a fact. Like when I say a fact and he goes, nah, -uh, until I physically like prove it to him. Ooh. That twists my gears. In my in my defense, I feel like it's really fun to challenge people and get them to use their third <laughs> yeah. uh, their third creative brain. So I like to pick you sometimes. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Why does it bother me? No, I ask the question why. Oh yeah. Like he'll just um, keep asking. He's like a three year old sometimes. So he'll be like, know, why? Like cumulonimbus clouds. Why? Why? <laughs> um, yeah. I'm gonna go with. Oh, easy. We'll make verbal plans to do something at set amount of time. You and I too. go, no, I do not. And I go, text me when you're on your way home. Oh. Text me when you're about to be here. Text me when I should come down from my room. My room's on the top floor. So I'm not going to be miraculously waiting on the level, bottom level with open arms. And yeah. and about an hour and 30 minutes later, I'm like, hey, what's up? Where are you at? Oh, I'm in bed. Yeah. I'm here. Just, yeah. just making a video. Just, I don't know. That's my bad. I just... There's a little disconnect. Yeah. It's also like what happens is to be like, not fair. Like I, he's right. Like I'll I won't tell him when I'm home and I don't, it's because I drive in and my favorite time of the day is when I'm sitting in my car and there's just silence. And I'm just like, it's a first, it's like the only time I've been alone all day and I value my alone time so much. And so I'll take like 15 minutes to just sit in my car and just stare at the wall. Did I ever tell you I visualized this once? I know you, but he also visualizes when I sprint around my room. Do you hate when I do that? No, I actually find it quite enthusiastic. Yeah. I'll sprint around my room with my headphones in, just going in circles like really fast and he can hear it. Yeah, so I picture a white wall that immediately just goes black. And as soon as it goes black, you get like that two seconds of like really cool optical illusion where you still have the white. Um, I envision that as you're like tiny in my car with no sound, nothing moments. And all you hear is like that tiny ring. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. My vision in my mind and it just like my just ears, so they just go like dark and numb and I'm just like, yes. Yeah, I understand your brain. Your yeah. brain makes perfect chronological sense to me. Yeah, so then I'll do that and then I just, I'll go inside and I just won't text him. And it's my bad. Yeah. I need to, I'm, I'm working on that. I do that. That's you do annoying. a good job though. You try. I try my best. And then what's an irrational fear that I have? Everything. I need to, I'll, um, cats. <laughs> sensitive subject, group gatherings. Yeah. Like, girl. Um, he gets the brunt force of that. I would say if you really wanted to level up your life, learning to understand and kind of not overthink and analyze group gatherings would set you up for so much success. Mm -hmm. Like, you are meant for it. You are. I, 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 like, do this thing. It's probably, it's so much on him. Like, for the entire day, we usually go to group gatherings together. Like, if there's something that we're both doing at the end of the day, he gets the majority of, like, I don't want to go. How do I look? I think I look stupid. I don't think this shirt fit, fits me you right. You give me this? I, yes. Yeah. I give all of this to him. Like, I'm like, Carter, like, I don't want to do this. And he's like, you're going. And then I'm like, I don't want to. And he's like, you're going to do great. And I'm like, ah. And then we get there and I do completely fine. I go home and I'm like, oh, that wasn't too bad. And he's like, yeah. you just, ugh. It also wears off. And I find myself now being a little more, like, nervous, excited. Yeah, I need to. I've kind of, I've, I've, I've uh, what's it called where you take two words and you like make them the same thing in your head? Combine. Yeah, I've kind of combined the meaning of nervous, nervous and excitement mm -hmm. before something. It's like, I don't know. It's really easy for your brain to get them confused because yeah. your nerves are nervous. Ah. Good job. I didn't. I don't think it made sense. I just wanted a to say bit. that. A little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, so like, I do have a lot of irrational fears. I I would say yours is not thinking that you're funny. Sometimes you'll just walk in the room and be like, oh, this isn't funny. And it's like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Sure. I think, yeah, because I might be a tough critic of myself yeah. and I always want to make sure that I'm performing to like, not performing, but I'm just like, my brain's on. Yeah. Your brain has like an on off switch. I feel mm -hmm. like I, when it's not fully on, sometimes I'll get like a little upset and not understand that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's that I'm not funny. You'll go through a social situation. You're such a comic, a comedic relief. My wittiness. Yeah. So, wit, I care about my wittiness. And yeah. if, I, if my wittiness isn't on it, then I know that I'm just having like an off day. Yeah. Well, which is like, again, I tell people this all the time. He's like the funniest person I've ever met. Like he's the wittiest and quickest person ever. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, yeah. Um, what's one of my most embarrassing moments? I don't know if I can say the, the time you threw, off, you threw up off the balcony. I did do that. Am I allowed to? Sorry. Yeah. That's like a lot. No, it's fine. I did do that. I don't even want to like get into detail. No, I, we shouldn't. 
No, it's fine. That was embarrassing. I had like, yeah, I had to like be pulled off. The Most balcony. embarrassing. What? I can't. What did I do? Let's just go with the first one. Wait, what did I do? No, you know I you do this. What did I do? Do you want me to say it? Yeah. When you went back to your ex. Carter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, that really was a moment. I was there with you. I understood your pain. But yeah, I was looking at you a little crooked. I'm sorry. We need to end the show. I'm sorry, but if you really just think about the, the bolts, when you decide to end something with someone, that's usually the decision you, like, ride. Oh my God. And so then God. to go back and be like, I'm going back, it's. You're right. I don't want to clown you though, because a lot of people do it, and it's a really hard thing to get over. And I am single, single, single. I'm single. single. No mistress, no Mister. Single. Single. That was like Man. a lot. I'm, I'm sorry. What's one of your most embarrassing moments? What's one of my most embarrassing moments? I know the top one, but I can't. I'm not gonna say it on. No, I'm not gonna. No. <gasps> I'm not gonna say that though. Oh no. I feel like you do embarrassing things, but on purpose. So. I'm, try I'm really trying to think. He, you also just, he doesn't get embarrassed. Like, you will do things and just, like, utterly not be embarrassed. And it's so impressive. That's the thing that you taught me. It's just, like, you can't. You like, embarrassment it. is, he goes, embarrassment is a mindset. Well, when I wanted to make friends in high school, I, like, went into high school posting the most cringy, like, backpack kid floss. Like, if you know that video. Like, I was basically a wannabe backpack kid. And I posted minute-long videos of me dancing Super cringe, and that's why my TikTok name is Cringe Carter. When I first started, I was really awkward. I owned it. Yeah. I said, you know what? If people are gonna make fun of me to my face, they might as well leave me comments about it too. Yeah, like he's just so he doesn't he just doesn't get embarrassed, and I think like that's like so real. I'll show him, or he'll bring up, he'll be like, oh look how funny this is, and it's old videos of himself, and I'm just like, how are you like not vomiting right now and it's not because the video isn't funny because yeah. you've always been funny but i can't do that i can't go back and look at my old stuff because i'm like i physically have a reaction that makes me want to like sit on yeah. the toilet and cry and that's okay so yeah no nothing he doesn't get embarrassed <sighs> i feel like you could i feel like there's some stuff you could bring up do you want me to say it well not that one that one was just so personal that one was bad oh i i know an embarrassing moment we he was having a moment of vulnerability with me and was attempting to communicate when I was away on a trip and I was having a planking competition with me and my girlfriend's dad. We're like, how long can you hold the plank? We were just being like dude bros about it. And I am I set a timer on my phone and he took my phone earlier because he was like, I hate when you're on do not disturb. I want to get through when, when you're on do not disturb. So during the favorited. period. Yeah, during the period where I was just, I wasn't responsive and he took my phone, put himself on favorite, so whenever he called me or texted me, it would come through. Yeah. And so I set a timer on my phone, and I had the timer counting, and he was texting me like as we were doing this planking competition so her dad could see all of the texts that he was sending me. And they were just, we'll say, emotionally vulnerable. I was really trying to express my emotions. <laughs> I put it through a chat GBT um, <laughs> to make sure that it sounded really high-leveled. And I was just trying to communicate, and I chose the wrong time to do that. Yeah, and the funniest part about it is he would send it, and you do this a lot. You know you shouldn't have sent it. And so I get the notification, Carter, unsent a message. And I'm like, Ch we saw it. <laughs> we saw the message. Um, and it wasn't just one. It was multiple. It was a wake-up call to maybe these conversations should happen in person. Yeah, that was that was a big one. And <laughs> not translated through chat GPT. Yeah, I would say. What's my favorite dessert? Your, I feel like we both have the same favorite dessert. Uh, your favorite dessert? Oh, we have the same one. Should we decide on this kind of three? Oh my gosh, what if it's wrong? It's not. Okay. One, two, three. Chocolate cookie. chip cookie. Chocolate chip cookie. We get chocolate chip cookies together all the time. That's and like our thing. And there's a cafe near our place of residence that has vegan. We're not vegan, cookies. but it's fantastic. It's better. Yeah. I have zero preference, but yeah, I yeah. choose vegan chocolate chip cookie every time. Yeah. And we get it slightly warmed, and sometimes we'll even get a glass of milk and share it except he drinks the milk and I'm a normal person and I don't drink milk. And so, yeah, we'll split it. We'll split it. And then, okay, what's, um, this is a cuter flow out. What's one moment where you were just really proud of me? One moment when I was really proud of you? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so many of those. Really? I'm proud of you so much. Are really? you kidding? You're going to have to make me choose? Yeah. Okay. Just something. Um, a moment I was proud of you. There was one moment, we were at VidCon and we were 
we were not together, but I was like kind of planning on meeting up with you and you were going to come to my concert where mm-hmm. I was hosting yeah. a bunch of people singing music. I was really proud of you because when we were out there, I was doing my thing, you know, getting jiggy with it, dancing with the old gays on TikTok. Yeah. Um, what an experience. Wow. I'm getting the flashbacks. It was it was fun. It was chaotic. And it was it was captivating for my mind. Yeah. But at the end of it, I had this entire dance party that was not scripted. Nobody asked for it. I just said, I got glow sticks. I don't want to keep them. Yeah. So I want to give them out. So I went out there and started doing like Jenga with my hands and stuff. And then you came out with a gay flag and you were like running around with it, waving it to Muna. And it was like the most perfect like moment. And I have it like pictured in my, in my memory so vividly because I was like, this girl does not do social gatherings, does not understand like group energy yeah and then came out on a stage where it's literally me a girl dressed as a unicorn dj it was weird (laughs) yeah for some reason vidcon's the place to be (laughs) just gonna say it yeah loved it um and at the end of it you showed me your hand as we walked off the stage and you were like going through a magnitude eight earthquake i was my whole body was vibrating i was so nervous but i was proud of you thank you you did the thing you went out there you said accomplished check yeah and I we was did a part it. of it. That was really fun. That was cool for me too. That was like a cool like growing experience. Yeah, I would say that. I would say for you is I know your job's really important for you, like to you. Yeah. So I would say when you got your spirit My your Spirit spirit, Halloween your spirit video. partnership. And you killed it. Thank like you. you didn't just get it, like you got it and you did it and it was great and it went super well. I was like he like I was that was like I I know I was proud of you because you knew that you did great too. Thank you. I've always viewed the best partnerships and the best like videos that are sponsored are when people can't tell mm-hmm. that they're sponsored and not a single comment was somebody like actually the top comments were like this probably cost him so much money on all this stuff and it was mm-hmm. just really cool to see how authentic and raw I could have been with that partnership. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find stuff like that, but I worked at Spirit Halloween during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I grew up loving going there because I used to find their animatronics scary. And so now I could befriend them and put them in our room to scare you. Yeah, which he did very violently. People really want me to make it a series, so keep your eyes peeled. They're definitely peeled. I don't want this episode to ever end because you're my favorite person. Maybe it won't. Yeah, we're gonna keep. We're gonna go home <laughs> and be like, "Was really that good? Won't. Was that good? Did we do good?" Like, oh, we're I'm gonna f- go home and have that conversation for sure. All right. All right. Well, I know where to find you. It's upstairs. But where can other people find you? Other people can find me on YouTube and Instagram at Carter Kench and at TikTok, which is my username of Cringe Carter. And then where can we find you on Snapchat? If y'all really care about that one, Carter Kench thirty three. Carter Kench thirty three. It's why um, thirty three. 33 was my lucky number growing up, and I also just liked the letter 3. I thought but it I also was liked the, num- or the number. Your lucky number's 13. My lucky number's 13, but when I grew up, 13 was unavailable, so I made 33. Lovely. And, and then I liked 3. Do you have any exciting projects coming up? I mean, I'm really excited to go see my baby daddy, the Grinch, this year. Yeah. I think that's something coming up, but I'm, I'm doing stuff every week. There's, yeah. there's an array of things that are going to be coming up, and there's only one way to be up to date. Follow him. You know what if I'm you saying. are really looking for excitement every week, his weekly YouTube videos are something that I also indulge in and enjoy, yeah. and I'm looking forward to when they come out. Yeah. So highly recommend those. And I'm Maddie, your host, Maddie Westbrook. This is Closet Talk, and you can find it on every single music streaming platform or on my YouTube channel here at Maddie Westbrook. And that's where I'm at on everything else, too. I do everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. Except for now we have to specify that I don't do OnlyFans. What? At, yeah, it was a thing last last episode. I don't do that. New episodes every single Friday. You can find me at Westbrook on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, the works. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. Yours was like so much longer than mine. I get it. You're the host. I just, I, I'm <laughs> No, no, no. Like I was going to say that's what she said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'm Carter the guest. Yeah. Bye.